language time. How did you do yesterday on your test? Not bad, right? That wasn't bad at all. Well, we've been talking about several different things with our dictionary skills, learning our alphabetical order, all of that. That's just helpful when you're looking things up. And we're going to talk about some other reference books and ways of looking things up and different things that can help you. But before we do that, I want to just kind of go back over some sentences and some some things to make sure we are not because you know remember this is all building blocks and we have to keep remembering the things that we've already learned so um, I'm gonna read some sentences and I want you to tell me yell out to me loudly because I'll, I'll be able to hear you I can hear like you'll be surprised um, yell out to me the verbs in the sentences that I read to you but wait till I finish the sentence. Don't be yelling it out, you know, when I'm trying to say the sentence and because that gets really rude. So make sure, um, let me finish the sentence and then yell out the verb to me so I can hear you say it because I'll be listening for you. The old dog limped painfully across the field. Woo, yes, limped was the right answer. The old dog limped. Limp is something you can do painfully across the field, good. Did you find an adverb in there? Yes, limped how? Painfully, okay, painfully, good. <clears throat> um, did you have find any adjectives in there? Old, mm, not the only one. The, the old dog limped painfully across the field, okay, those are good. Hannah and I are friends. Yes, R. Okay, am is R, was, were, have, has, had. R is our verb. I have flown in an airplane. Have flown. Yes, don't forget, have my helper and flown. Have flown. Carlos will celebrate his birthday tomorrow. Will celebrate. Yes, very good. Will celebrate. Good. Now I want you to um, identify the subjects in these next sentences. So this time just whisper. I'll be able to hear you just fine if you just whisper the subject. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> in the morning, two students led the pledges. Wait, what? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I, I told you whisper. All right, I helped mom make apple butter. I helped mom make apple butter. Good. Don't, some of you are thinking mom, no. I, yes, good job, apple butter, great. Next, listen and think carefully. We're gonna see who can get this. Close the door quietly. Close the door quietly. Because what kind of sentence is it? Imperative, giving a command. If it's an imperative sentence giving a command, the subject is always you. It's the understood you. It's not there, you're not saying it, but you close the door quietly. So you is the subject for that sentence. Yes, if you got it, good job. Okay, um, <laughs> last one. Cautiously, the kitten crept toward Emma's outstretched hand. Cautiously, the kitten crept toward uh, Emma's outstretched hand. Good, you did. Yes, excellent job. You are bosses, yes. So, kitten. Cautiously, the kitten crept toward Martha's outstretched hand. Who or what crept? Kitten crept. The verb would be crept, okay. Um, Crept how? Yes. Cautiously. And what kind of hand? Outstretched hand. Good. So adjective, adverb. Whose hand? Ooh, I almost forgot. Emma's hand. So Emma's is also an adjective describing hand. Good. 
Wow, that was fun kind of going through those sentences, but that's because when you know all those parts of speech, now we can just pick apart the sentences and tell all those different parts, so that's exciting. All right, so like I said, we've talked about our dictionary, we've talked about how, ways that our dictionary helps us, what dictionaries have, how dictionaries have our the words so that you can look it up to spell it correctly, how to pronounce it correctly, um, how it's used properly in a sentence, it gives a sample sentence, the definitions for it, all of that information that dictionaries give to us so that we can understand and know words. Well, there are many ways to find answers to questions that we might have. So it might not be looking up a word to know how to spell it or to say it or whatever. It might just be finding out information about science that we wanna know. We wanna know more about what Ms. Monroe talked about in science, or we wanna know more about that person in history that we really enjoyed, Martin Luther King Jr. or um, Amelia Earhart. I heard some of you guys sharing that those are, those are some of the ones that you really, really enjoyed, you were having fun. Well, you just wanna just learn a little bit about, about Amelia Earhart and that's it? No, I'll tell you, one of the things that I really enjoyed in school was, you know, we learned about the presidents, we learned, but then I did a report on Abraham Lincoln. And when I did that report on him, I learned so much more about him. So when I'm teaching Abraham Lincoln to you, I feel like I know him like a friend because I didn't just learn about him in, in school, but I also went and read other books about him and learned more things about him. And so that became a friend. You could do the same thing with Amelia Earhart or Dwight Eisenhower or even Jim and Elizabeth Elliot. I mean, there, there are so many things that you can do. Jim Thorpe and Jesse Owens in going and finding out information about these people. Some people just look on their computers to find the answers, but there are also books. And I know we don't sadly use the books as much anymore, but they have lots of information in great books that you can find about these you know, people or about these things that we've been talking about all year long. Encyclopedias, what did we do when we thought we were gonna be doing our animal notebook? Right, we looked in the encyclopedia to find about um, which mammal, whatever mammal we wanted to find about jaguars or about uh, pandas or about cheetahs or whatever mammal that we chose. We went back to the encyclopedia when we did the bird um, uh, section and we were looking up certain birds, whether it be a blue jay or a crow or an eagle. Then we went back when we were talking about invertebrates. That little red um, grouping of books that we looked at, those are encyclopedias and they're arranged in alphabetical order. And remember, we had ours, they were number order, but remember I also kept telling you, guys, these are in alphabetical order. You're, you have to look at the letters that you have there. So they're arranged in alphabetical order. The books have articles and pictures about many subjects. If you wondered how big your poodle might grow, you could look up the article about poodles and find out. Then we have atlases, and I showed you some atlases. I don't know if you'll remember, but in the beginning, I think I showed you at least one, because we have, I have, well, I had two. I don't know if I still have two, but the atlas is the big book of maps, and you can look at the maps of the different countries and the world and continents and all of that. Other atlases have maps of just one country. A United States atlas is just going to have the um, uh, maps of the United States and then it would have a map of each state and you would learn a little bit about each state. Then an almanac, we've talked about almanacs in history. It's a book that is written each year. Some almanacs tell about weather, recipes, gardening, phases of the moon, and many other interesting and useful kinds of information. And like I told you, they're still out. You can go and buy almanacs today in many stores that, and, and people use it all the time to help them to know when to plant and when not to, um, giving different recipes, like I said, or when the moon phases are gonna change and all of that they're still used today. Well, this is another part that we're gonna learn we, about a book. So we've got several different books that we can use, whether it's an encyclopedia, a dictionary, an atlas, an almanac. But within those books, within many of our books, we learned, first of all, that there's a glossary section at the end of many books that help us to find information about words and ideas that are in that specific book. 
at the front of some of these books is also going to be something helpful and it's called a table of contents. You will find a list of the names of the chapters and the page number where each chapter begins. Most Bibles even have a table of contents in them. And when you look in the beginning of the Bible, and you've done that, many of you have done that, it gives the table of contents. But it doesn't give chapters, obviously. It gives the books of the Bible in an order so that you will know what page to look on. So if you're looking, take out your Bibles, find them if you have them, okay? And I want you to look up the book of Job. You know, that's my Bible hero, so my favorite book. And yell out to me what page it's on. Because if you look right in your, your table of contents, you should be able to find the book of Job and yell out what page it's on. Oh, see, they're all different because our Bibles are different sizes, different, you know, a lot of different things. Mine is 826. Okay. All right. Look up the book of Zechariah. Zechariah, not Zephaniah, but Zechariah. All right. Yell it out. Mine is 1,444. 1444. That's what page number mine is on. All right. Let's go to the New Testament. Um, shout out Philippians. What page number it starts on? Mine is 1,848. Wow, right? Uh, all right, Revelation, 1,953 for mine. So that table of contents helps you to know where you can find that book, where that book of the Bible starts, okay? Um, so looking through those, are it's very helpful. Well, in our books, and as we've gone through our books this year, We've gone through the table of contents. I had you looking in your um, science book and I was like, look at the table of contents. These are all the things that we're going to learn about. When we did our, went through our reading books, we would go through our readers. Let me um, grab one. I have, oh, sorry. And we would go through, I shouldn't even do this one because this one we haven't gotten to yet. But we would look at the beginning and look for our table of contents and it tells what pages um, the chapters start on. Sorry, it's taking me a minute. Um, but that's what our table of contents does. And that's an important thing. So we have our contents page. And it starts off with, you know, the first chapter is the den and the dream. It starts on page nine. And then Christians fight, page four, flight, page 14. And it just goes through each of the different chapters and page numbers that it starts on. So table of contents are very, very helpful with finding where where the next chapter starts and how we're going to figure out where to get there, how to get there. So on your language page, page 176, because of time, we're gonna to try to move a little quicker. Page 176, table of contents. It's a list of the sections in a book. What is a table of contents? A list of the sections in a book. A list of the sections in a book is our table of contents. The table of contents tells the number of the first page of each selection. So it lists the different selections, but the different sections, but then it's giving the page number. This section starts at this page. This section starts at this page. So if we want to look for something, um, we're going to go to that specific page. Okay. Um, so you're going to look at think A, use the table of contents. Look at how easy this page is, guys. There's no complaining today for sure. Use the table of contents to answer each question. All right. So look at those carefully. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to let you do that. That's really easy. Now there's at the bottom a challenge and I challenge you to do the challenge. It says, how many books can you find that have a table of contents? So you don't need to tear through your house, but I want you to find at least three books that you can um, not, you know, well, no. Yeah, three books because you can't, well, I guess, yeah, you can use it. Don't use your Bible, but I want three other books because we already used our Bibles. Three other books that you can find that you can find a table of contents in. And you're just going to write the name of the books. 
and the number of sections. Well, when you're talking about the number of sections, you just count one, two, three, four. You know, it tells you how many chapters or how many sections are in that book. That's all you're doing. Okay. So I challenge you to do the challenge. So think A and challenge B on page 176, and then you're done with language for the day. How quick, crazy, simple, easy is that? And then we're almost done with language for the year. So hang in there, hang on, and keep plugging toward the end. We've got this. Yes. All right. See you soon.